But John chapter 1, you better recognize, listen to, uh, listen to the verses right here. It says, in verse 6, it says, Then suddenly a man appeared who was sent from God, a messenger named John. For he came to be a witness, to point the way to the light of life, and to help everyone believe. John was not that light, but he came to show who he is. For he was merely a messenger to speak the truth about the light. For the light of truth was about to come into the world and shine upon everyone. He entered into the very world he created, yet the world was unaware. He came to the very people, listen to this, he came to the very people he created, to those who should have recognized him, but they did not receive him. He came to the very people he created, to those who should have recognized him, but they did not receive him. Let's pray one more time. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you so much. Lord, thankful again to be in the house tonight. Lord, we just thank you that uh, we're able to be here. Lord, we just pray that words go forward tonight, that the word of God goes forward. Lord, that we can just finish out this year. Lord, I mean, you know, if we look at it, this is the last service of 2021. Uh, you know, Lord, help us finish out strong for the ones that are here. Help us finish out strong. Lord, help us start out. Help us finish 2021 strong. Help us start out 2022 strong. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You see, a lot of people don't know that, but that, that this is the last service, Sunday service of 2021. You know, this is the last Sunday service of 2021. How did you spend it? Well, I'm, I'm thankful for the ones who are going to spend it here tonight with us in church. Uh, you know, if anything, I feel like that's where we needed to have been all the way along from start to finish. That's where we really needed to be at to help draw strength and navigate everything that's went on through this year. But for next Sunday, will be, you know, the very first Sunday of 2022, we'll be here in the middle of service again. I want to talk to you tonight just for a few moments about the title, You Better Recognize. You better recognize John was sent. We talked about this before. John was sent to be a forerunner to Jesus. John was sent to spread the gospel, to, to let people know that there was a soon coming king. John was baptizing people in water, but he said, you know what? There's going to be a person who comes who won't baptize in water, yet he'll baptize with fire. He'll baptize in the Holy Spirit. He's like, I'm not even worthy to tie his sandals. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. And the more that John would talk about it, and, and then when Jesus would step on the scene in his ministry, when Jesus stepped on the scene, Jesus began to have problems because there were so many people who were so entrenched in religion that they could not see who Jesus was. Jesus spent so much time talking, and, and he didn't have a problem with the Gentiles as much as when he did the Jews. Because the Jews were so entrenched in religion along the way that every time Jesus would talk, every time Jesus would do something, every time Jesus would heal or deliver or set free, the Jews always had a problem with it because they were also entrenched in so much religion along the way. Jesus would heal on the Sabbath and they just their, their minds would be blown because, you know, what we're supposed to rest on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, you know what? He said, I come to heal, deliver, and set free. I didn't come to get rid of the law, but I came to fulfill the law. I came to show you that, you know what, that, that people can't uphold the law, but yet I am the grace, I am the sacrifice to show you that the law is not to be obtained, but yet through grace, you can try to follow it the best way possible. And so as John was doing this, you know, as I, and I, as I was reading this scripture, it took me back to two places. You better recognize it. It, it, it took me back first and foremost to whenever Jesus was born, back in the book of Matthew. It took me back to, to whenever Herod had, had heard that there was this Messiah that was about to come, that there was this promise, this answer that was about to come. And, and, and Herod got jealous because he was being challenged for his throne. Herod didn't want to give up control. Like, you know what, a lot of people don't want to give up control. They don't want to give up control of their life. They don't want to give up control of their finances, of their circumstances, of their situations. They don't want to give up control. And neither did Herod. So Herod sent out people to go spy out and see where Jesus was at. But he didn't have the good of intentions whenever he sent these people out. He was going to find out where Jesus was and he was going to have Jesus killed. So listen to this right here. It says Matthew 2 
Verse 7, listen to what it says. It says, Then Herod secretly summoned the spiritual priest from the east to ascertain the exact time the star first appeared. And he told them, Now go to Bethlehem and carefully look there for a child. And when you found him, report to me so that I can go and bow down and worship him too. And so they left, and on their way to Bethlehem, suddenly the same star they had seen in the east reappeared. Amazed, they watched as it went ahead of them and stopped directly over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were so ecstatic that they shouted and celebrated with unrestrained joy. And when they came into the house and saw the young child with Mary, his mother, they were overcome. Falling to the ground at his feet, they worshipped him. And then they opened their treasure boxes full of gifts and presented him with the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh. And afterward, they returned to their own country by another route because God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. So these same people that Herod had sent out to spy out where Jesus was at, Jesus began to take and turn and twist and maneuver their motivation and use it to a different direction. But now watch this. The Bible says that whenever they showed up, Whenever they walked into the presence of Jesus, Jesus was still a baby at this time. Jesus was still just a wee little thing. And they walk into the room where Jesus was at. And the presence was so strong in that room. The Bible says that as soon as they walked in, they were ecstatic. They shouted. They, they, and, and as soon as they saw the young child with Mary, it says they were overcome. They were overcome, ladies and gentlemen. By what? What? They were overcome by the power and the presence that was in the room with Jesus. Even though he was just a small child, they were overcome. And it says, falling to the ground at his feet, they worshipped him. And they opened up their treasure to him. Boxes full of gifts, full of gold and frankincense and myrrh. They literally worshipped at Jesus' feet, even though he was a small child. Watch this. My one point up there, you got to receive him, you have to recognize him. To receive him, you have to recognize him. Isn't it funny that as soon as they walked into that room, they began to recognize that there was something different in that room. There was something different in that room. They began to recognize without a shadow of a doubt that there was something different. And whenever you recognize that there's something different, you can receive what he has in store. It's the same way with your circumstances, situations, whatever you want to do. 2021, you can put whatever you want to in there. As soon as you recognize that God is in the middle of it with you, then you can receive what he has in store. A lot of people walk around and they go, well, I can't see God. I can't feel God. I can't hear God. I can't, I can't, God, I can't this, I can't that. And my question is, do you recognize him? Do you recognize him in the middle of your circumstances? Do you recognize him? You know, the Bible talks in so many places where, and I was just reading this the other day, where, you know what, that the, uh, that the disciples got into the boat to go to the other side. Jesus was not with them at the time. But yet, what, what does the Bible say? That Jesus came to them on the water and it scared them half to death. They thought it was a ghost. And Jesus began to speak to them. Well, let me ask you a question. How would they know it was Jesus' voice unless they recognized him? Think about that. Think about that. They didn't know it was Jesus until Jesus started speaking. And you know, oftentimes we can't hear the audible voice of God because why? Because we don't recognize the voice because we don't listen for the voice. We listen... For the sirens to go off when there's a warning. We listen to the media. We listen to the TV. We listen to people. But can we listen to the audible voice of God? And know that it's the voice of God. There's so many times and seasons inside of this Bible where it was like, you know what? They literally had to know who Jesus was in order for Jesus to operate the way that he did. And in so many times, they were astonished by who Jesus was. 
They were astonished. They watched him do miracle after miracle. They watched him come up out of the hole of the ship as the storm was raging and they were freaking out thinking the boat was going to sink. And they said, Jesus, why are you sleeping? And he came to the top and he spoke to the wind and the waves and he said, be still. Be still. And at the moment that he would perform a miracle, they recognized, they had to recognize that there was something different. Or else they would have never been able to receive the miracle. I just watched, man, I, and I was reading John 4, 5, and 6. is literally crazy because there are so many miracles happening. John chapter 4, you talk about the, you talk about the, uh, about the lady at the well. John chapter 4. John chapter 5 is the feeding of the 5,000. John chapter 6, we're talking about the man at the pool of Bethesda. Man, it's so crazy at how many miracles happen in just a three-chapter span. But you know what? We'll go back to the woman at the well and how she's so parched. You know, she had to recognize who he was in order to receive what he had in store for her. She was so thirsty until she met the man who could give her water that would never run dry. And she had to recognize who he was in order to receive what he had in store. You know, I think it's kind of funny that those men that Herod sent out that night was going to do his work for him until God got a hold of them along the way. And as soon as they walked into that room, they recognized that there was something different about that child. And then they began to listen to the audible voice of God that said, do not go home the same way you came. And I tell you what, that's a New Year message in itself right there. Don't go back the same way you came. Don't go back the same way that you came. Instead, recognize that God is waiting in your tomorrow. He's already taken care of your past or you wouldn't be here right now. Amen. And in order to receive what you have for tomorrow, you need to understand that God is waiting on you there. And not to go back the same way that you came. Not to go back the same way that you came. You better recognize. It took me to that place right there to understand that in order to receive him, you have to recognize him. You have to actually understand that somebody is there waiting on you to forgive you, to love you, and to help you get to a better place in your life. But it also took me to another place. And this is one of the most prolific stories that you will ever find in the Bible. This is something that we, we read about, we talk about. I love the story. I've said it a thousand times. I hardly can't read the text without beginning to cry because I understand at the very moment of which the father sees the son that the passion that pours out of his life is something that can't be replaced. And you can't really put it into words. But Jesus is telling a parable in Luke 15. And it's going to be very, very familiar as soon as you hear it. But in verse 20, it says, So the young son set off for home. And from a long distance away, his father saw him coming, dressed as a beggar, and great compassion swelled up in his heart for his son, who was returning home. So the father raced out to meet him, and he swept him up in his arms, hugged him dearly, and kissed him over and over with tender love. And the son said, Father, I was wrong. I have sinned against you. I could never deserve to be called your son. Just let me be. And then the father interrupted and said, Son, you're home now. Son, you're home now. My last point is, is that once you receive him, he never forgets you. Once you receive him, he never forgets you. Why is that exactly? Think about the prodigal son just for a second. I want you to understand that the father had granted every wish and request of the prodigal son. Give me my money. Give me my inheritance. Give me what's mine. Give me what's saved up. Give me, even though I may not be ready for it, Give it to me anyways. And the father honored the son's wishes, even though he probably knew best. But he honored the son's wishes. And the son went out and he squandered every single penny that he had. 
Every single penny that he had, he squandered it. And he came back with nothing. He came back with nothing. When he left, he had the finest clothes. He had the finest food. He had money. He had power. He had prestige. He had all of these things. And yet whenever he left, he squandered every bit of it because he didn't know how to manage it. He didn't know how to manage it. Think about this. He came back home. He had traded his ring, his signet ring. He traded it. He came back home dirty, no shower, no food. He literally was trying to eat pig slop. I guarantee you he hadn't had a haircut, probably hadn't shaved, probably hadn't done anything whatsoever. So he had lost weight. He was skinny. He was dirty. He was nasty. He was nappy from his head to his toe. Now think about this. Whenever you begin to think about the sun coming over the ridge, I guarantee you that a lot of people didn't even know who he was because he didn't look the same as when he left. But it's kind of funny to me that from a far way off, the father who had raised him, the father who had instilled teachings inside him, the father who had took time to get to know the son, still recognized him even though he didn't look the same. He still recognized him even though he was completely different. He still recognized him even though he had squandered everything that was saved up for him. He still recognized him. He did not forget about him. He did not forget about him. And you know, it kind of makes me wonder sometimes, have you ever not noticed somebody or have you gone a long period of time without seeing somebody and then you see them? You see them one day at Walmart or you see them one day out somewhere and it's the first time that you've seen them in a really long time. And sometimes whenever you see them, you have to take a second look and a third look and a fifth look and you're like, is that really who I think it is? But I'm thankful tonight that you know what? That whenever I receive the Father into my heart and into my life, that He never has to do a double take on me. That no matter how bad I look, no matter how dirty I look, no matter how messed up I am, no matter how I've squandered everything in my life, He never has to do a double take because why? Because why? Because He already knows who I am. He already knows who I am. He's already seen me. Before the world seen me, he's already fellowshiped with me before the world knew me. He's already known everything about me. He knows everything about me in my life, even before I do it. That's who God is. That's who God is. And so if there's anything, ladies and gentlemen, if there's anything that, that I can tell you tonight, that I can literally just come up here on stage and just be as real and as truthful as can be, I don't truly think tonight that we have to do anything to spruce the Bible up. I don't think we have to do anything to make the Bible more relative to 2021 or 2022 at this point. I think we can literally look at the times that we're living in right now at this very moment. And I think we can read the Bible and I think we can understand that the Bible lines up exactly with what we're dealing with right now. Amen. I think we can look tonight and we can all agree that there are Johns out there in the forerunning right now trying to tell people about who Jesus is, what he's come to do, how he's going to do it, when he's going to do it, and yet people are still looking and going, you're crazy. I think tonight we can all agree that at the end of the night that Jesus has set up his kingdom, that, that he has come, that he has resurrected, and that he's literally left the power and the keys in our hands to build the kingdom as much as what we can until the day that he returns. And in order to do that, ladies and gentlemen, I really don't think that we're going to have a problem near as much like John did. I don't think we're going to have a problem with the Gentiles. I think we're going to have a problem with the Jews. What does that mean? No, I'm not being racist. I'm calling people religious tonight. We're going to have more of a problem trying to display who Jesus is to the religious versus the ones who didn't have a clue who he was. That's why people can come in who don't know anything about Jesus and they can hear about grace, love, and mercy and they can hear about forgiveness and they can hear about healing and they can hear about salvation and they want that. But yeah, you take somebody who, man, I've practiced the same religion for 37 years. You're like, yo, Jesus wants to mess you up. And they're like, you know what? I don't know about all of that. Like, 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 like let's just take for example. Let's just take for example. 
We usually have service when? 1115? How many people did it mess up to do 715 tonight? How many people did it mess up? How many people didn't mess up? And if you can look and you can say, well, I can't be here because or I'm doing this or I'm doing that, then you're basically trying to tell me in one way or another that it's becoming more of a religion than what it is a relationship. Right. Let me ask you a question. Can we be able to meet with Jesus at any time? Yeah. Can we be able to worship Jesus at any time? Can we be able to praise Jesus at any time? I'm going to tell you right now, we better recognize. We better recognize when Jesus is in the room. We better recognize when Jesus is in the crowd. We better recognize when Jesus speaks. We better recognize the plans that he has. We better recognize, ladies and gentlemen, that coming in 2022, next Sunday, and I hate it because everybody's like, New Year's resolutions, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I think, honestly, that we should take the resolutions and wad them up and throw them in the garbage and say, you know what, instead of a resolution, I'm going to concentrate on my relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Forget about a resolution, I'm going to concentrate on a relationship this year. I'm going to pursue Jesus more passionately than what I ever have in my life. I'm going to recognize I'm not going to miss the voice of God any longer. When he speaks, I'm going to listen. I'm not going to miss him in the crowd. I'm going to know that he's in the crowd with me. I'm not going to miss him in the circumstance that I'm in because I know that he's in the circumstance with me. I'm not going to miss him any longer. I'm going to pursue him. You know what? The Bible says that his people know his voice. I honestly think tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if we're spending the time to read, to pray, and to seek, we'll know his voice. We will recognize, ladies and gentlemen. The problem, the biggest problem, and then I'm going to pray and let these kids come back up. The biggest problem, the biggest problem that the, that the disciples were facing in the times that they were in was they were working against a religious mindset. They were working against a religious mindset and the answer was right in front of them. Jesus was performing the miracles. Jesus was doing exactly what he came to do. And they were more worried about trying to put Jesus into this preconceived box as to what the Savior was supposed to be. They wanted Jesus to come in as a king, and they got a kid instead. And they missed. A lot of people missed him. Go back and read what verse 11 says. He came for those he created. But because they did not recognize him, they could not receive him. Right. I would hate to be that person. I would hate to be that person that I could not recognize him so I did not receive him. I would hate to be that person that missed out on the blessings of God because I could not recognize the blessings of God. I would hate to be the person tonight that literally could not recognize the voice of God so I could not receive what he wants to speak into my life. I would hate to be that person. So ladies and gentlemen, as we pray tonight, these kids are going to come back up and sing a song that's, that's called Go Tell It on the Mountain. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Are you going to face pushback for that? Absolutely. Absolutely. People are going to laugh at you and make fun of you? Absolutely. People are going to ask you, well, if Jesus is Lord, then where has he been this year? Where has he, where has he at last year? Couldn't he just make this whole thing stop? Couldn't he just make this whole thing go away if he really is Jesus, if he really is Lord? Couldn't he do that? And my response and my rebuttal to that is, you know what? 
I don't think Jesus has ever left. My problem is, is I think that we can't recognize where he is. Amen. We can't recognize where he is. What do we say all the time, man? We, we, we quote 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 because it's so wonderful. If my people who are called by my name shall turn and repent from their wicked ways and they shall cry unto heaven and I can hear them and then I will, I will heal their land. That sounds amazing until you actually break it down. And when you actually break it down, it says my people who are called by my name, if they turn and repent from their wicked ways, you know what? That puts the responsibility on us. And it's so wonderful to quote that verse until the responsibility lays upon us. Right. And you ask the question, is it the fact that God has left us? Or that we can't recognize Him? Because we can't turn from our wicked ways. We can't repent. We can't turn. We're so focused on everything else. We're so focused on what God would look, what would God do? What would God look like? What would God look like? I guarantee you with everything that I've got right now, hat on, tattoos on my arm, ripped up skinny jeans, shoes unlaced, I would probably be disqualified from 62% of pulpits across America right now. Because there is a preconceived notion as to what the gospel is supposed to look like when it goes forward. And that's why so many people miss it. That's why so many people miss it. Because people were so used to the Pharisees. People were so used to the long, elaborate prayers. People were so used to seeing the righteous robes that they missed Jesus with the filthy rags. Yep. Great. Because they had this preconceived notion as to what it was supposed to look like and they didn't recognize it. Next Sunday, January the 2nd, 2022. Most of you guys that come in here, y'all are here every Sunday. Appreciate you. But whenever you come in next Sunday, can you come in? I want you to come in next Sunday First Sunday of the year, with an open mindset as to what God looks like. Open mindset as to what God looks like. Don't put God in your box and see what God wants to do. Go tell it all now. Invite somebody out. Come to church with you on Sunday. Tell them we've got plenty of room to come hang out. I want to pray. And then we're going to have the kids back up to sing one more song. After they get done singing, we're going to take communion together really quick. If you